Hi, I'm Mark Toole with 8020service.com and marktool.com. And today's customer service question of the day from Quora is, what are the typical challenges you face while handling customers? Okay, so the, this is one of those questions where there's a lot of obvious answers, and the obvious answers are not wrong, and they hit upon the real thing that I'm going to say here, but they're not the complete answer. Some of the obvious answers, and actually I'll just look at this first answer that shows up here, not picking on this guy in any way, it's a good answer. But he says some of the challenges are customers not sociable, angry, upset, they're distracted, they have an unfulfilled need, they're looking to make a purchase, it's not a purely transactional situation. Okay, fine. Those are some of the common ones. I mean, the other ones are like things like understanding what the customer needs to do, figuring out what they want, figuring out the best way to help them. These are the obvious things, but it comes down to a few bigger concepts that I'm going to talk about here. Number one is the underlying current of almost all human interaction, if you really think about it, and that is attention and the management of attention. If you're watching this video right now, I have your attention. You're paying attention to me talking about this customer service thing. If your customer has a question or an issue or a problem or something like that with your service and they reach out to you, you have their full attention. Why? Because they want to know the answer to that question. They want to see how you solve that problem or at least see that you solve that problem. They have something they need from you and they're paying attention to you so they can get that. You're presumably watching this video because you wanted to see my answer to this question because you liked the looks of my face. I have no idea why you're watching this video, but the point is attention. You have the customer's attention, you can deliver a message to them. If you don't have their attention or you deliver your message in such a poor way that you lose their attention, it's not gonna work. A lot of these companies, if you see, send an email to a bunch of companies that you work with, ask some simple question, see what you get in return. Some of them will send you a simple answer. Hey, good question, here's where you can find that information. Good. Some of them will send you a long-winded, templated thing with all this crap you didn't ask about. Thank you for emailing International Bullshit Company. We've been in, in the bullshit industry since 1947 and have won 47 prestigious awards in bullshittery. And we value you as a customer and your valued query, and therefore we shall be answering you eventually. These these bullshit templates, you've already lost most people. Okay, okay, what's the answer? We regret to inform you that we will not be helping you. Please call our call center. That's what some of these companies do. They'll make you wait like four days, send you a bullshit form letter email that says, uh, too bad, call us. Why bother having an email address at that point? It's, it's a poor use of attention. Attention is also why, uh, to go off on a little bit of a tangent here, why a lot of customers still in these days prefer to get customer support via the phone. Because if you send an email, if you send me an email, I can ignore you. If you send me a live chat, it maybe it's a little bit harder, but I can still ignore you. If you call me on the phone and actually get me to answer, which I won't answer, but if you call some company on the phone and they have to answer, you're going to have someone there who, whether they like it or not, you've captured their attention. You as the customer have captured that agent's attention. A lot of problems in customer service come from this because the company set the thing up where no one they care about, no one who matters, no one who can make an actual decision is ever going to be put in that position where the customer can capture their attention. They hire dummies to do that for them. That's not my approach to customer service. I've talked about that before. I've written about that extensively on the customer service website, 8020service.com. You can read that there. But... That's the first challenge, I guess, in customer service, handling customers, is attention and the proper management of attention. If, you need to, if you're reaching out to somebody, you need to make sure you get their attention. If they're reaching out to you, you need to make sure you keep their attention. And because attention is one of the most powerful energy sources there is, go to Twitter and look at the trends for you topic section on the side. And then look at people getting outraged by whatever the trend is of the day. Whoever puts those trends there can direct the outrage of those people. That's a large-scale example. But your customer is coming into you with their energy, their attention, giving that to you. I have this problem. I want it solved. How you handle that matters. You can direct that back and say, 
actually, this is your fault. You screwed up. Fuck you. And they're going to be mad. Or if you do it pr properly, even with the same answer, you can get a much better result. How to specifically do that is beyond the scope of this video. Anyways, next challenge, and this is somewhat related, is emotions. Human beings are emotional creatures. Most decisions are made, whether you realize it or not, emotionally. Like the example I just talked about, Twitter, and the people getting outraged there. Oh, somebody said this, I'm outraged. Uh, Donald Trump said literally anything. I'm outraged. This is, this is the nature of the thing. And your customers maybe are not going to be, hopefully, depending on what you sell, they're not going to be contacting your business outraged about Donald Trump, unless you're telling Donald Trump merchandise or something. But they might be contacting you angry that the thing they bought doesn't deliver what they thought it would be, or they can't get into the website, or the password reset thing is down, or um, you charge them for a renewal on their subscription and they didn't want that, or whatever other thing, they're going to be coming to you with emotions, and a challenge in customer service is handling those emotions intelligently. Because emotions are addictive, and I'll say contagious, uh, chemicals in the human mind. They're addictive in the obvious sense that if you feel a powerful emotion, whether it's positive or negative, it triggers a lot of biological systems that I'm not going to go into the details here either, but it feels good. Even if you're angry, even if you're upset, you feel like you're on the right, the right side of the world. You're fighting for justice. This evil company whose password reset system is down is screwing over the little people and you're going to get revenge. It feels good even when it feels bad, if that makes any sense. So you can't just simply ignore your customer's emotions. You certainly can't get emotional back and tell them to go fuck themselves. You can, but I wouldn't recommend it in most cases. You have to learn to manage their emotions intelligently. And there's different ways to do that. Again, keeping it pretty broad in this video, but dealing with emotions is another issue there. You know, I'm really actually, I was going to say some more things, but I think between those two, it really covers it. Learn to deal with emotions of your customers, deal with your customers' emotions, and learn to understand, manage, and redirect their attention towards the thing that you want to direct it towards. All of marketing, all of persuasion, all of copywriting, these things are essentially management of attention. And so is customer service. It's just a subset of those things as well. So for example, you're always going to be trying to persuade your customer of something, whether you realize it or not, whether you think so or not. Even if you're not trying to sell them something, if they contact you upset, emotional, whatever, that they're having this issue with their account, you have a job to do there. It's not simply to fix the issue with the account. You should probably fix the issue with the account, but you should also communicate that to them in a way that persuades them, makes them think, feel that they've been taken care of, that the business cares about them, that this is a one-off situation. This is the, another problem I have with a lot of conventional customer service is they have these, I call them NPCs, but these call center agents that are just sitting there with a couple of computer screens reading off a procedures guide, reading off a script. If customer asks about this, do this, read this script. Thank you for calling company's name. I will be happy to help you with this. May I have you unplug your computer? You, you all know the type. Um, the problem is the perception that creates. The persuasion, if if you want to use that term here, it's it's persuading the person to think the wrong thing. When you talk to that person, there's a couple things that become very, very, very clear to you if you're even slightly perceptive. One, that they're reading off a script, that their answers are not their own, that it's something from a script. What that means is your question is something that this guy has heard dozens, hundreds, thousands of times before. Something that the company could have fixed, should have fixed, has hundreds of people asking about it every day, but they think... Nah, let's just pay a bunch of NPCs to bang out the same scripted answer over and over and over again. It's not leaving, even if you fix the issue with a temporary patch or a band-aid or whatever it requires, they know that you're not, you don't really care about that and that if this happens again, and it will, they're going to have to go through the same hassle about it again. It's the wrong 
thing to leave your customers thinking. So I've said enough about this. I'll wrap this up here. The real challenges in customer service are managing attention and managing emotions. And speaking of emotions, if you like this video, thought it was interesting, useful, valuable, if I've captured your attention this long, hit that like, upvote, follow, subscribe button, whatever platform you're on. I post these on Quora and also on YouTube. If you have a question for me about customer service or business, ask me on Quora, ask me in the comments on YouTube. I may use it in a future video. And of course, for more of my writing on this stuff, business, customer service, 8020service.com, like the 8020 principle, for more of my general writing, thoughts, etc., marktool.com, you can find all of that there. Get on both of those email lists, whatever interests you. Um, otherwise, I'll be back soon with another video.